Hey folks, this is Melvin from Optoproductions.com and in this video I'll cover another Mutable Instruments module, Stages. Stages, also known as the Segment Generator by Audible Instruments, is a six-stage envelope generator. If you think about an ADSR curve, like this one, you've got four stages, Attack, Decay, Sustain and Release. Just like the default VCV rack ADSR envelope generator, the sliders adjust the timing of each stage. If we want to recreate this ADSR curve, we need four stages instead of six. But before we go there, let's go one step back and start by recreating an attack decay envelope. And in this case, we only need two stages. So how do we reduce the number of stages? That's where the gate inputs at the bottom come into play. Let's grab an LFO first. Now I need to think from right to left. Each stage has its own gate input. And wherever we insert a gate signal, decides how many stages are used. So in this case we want two. So from right to left, we've got one and two. Now the amount of stages is split. We got a two stage envelope over here. And on the other side, we got a four stage envelope. At the bottom, we've got the outputs per stage, but the main envelope output is always the one underneath the gate input. So let me grab a filter and a VCO. So if we take the main envelope output and send it to the filter cutoff CV input. And I also connect it to a scope so we can see what's going on. Okay, so here we've got our two-stage attack and decay envelope. So by adjusting the sliders, we can change the timing of each stage. So the attack and the decay. With the knobs on top, we can adjust the curve. Linear at 12 o'clock and exponential or logarithmic on either side. All right, now that you know how that works, let's return to our four stage envelope. If you grab a copy of the LFO output and send it to gate input number one, and if we move the output over to output one as well, we now cut our ADSR curve. Remember to leave the previous gate input still patched, as this will split up the amount of stages into one group of four and one group of two. So now we can recreate the famous ADSR curve, like we see on the left. So we got attack, decay, sustain, and release. There's one problem, however. There's currently no way of adjusting the sustain level. We can adjust the timing, but not the level. In order to fix this, we need to press the push button on top, two times, until the LED is lit red. This will change the type of the segment from a ramp to a hold segment. Now the slider adjusts the sustain level. And the knob on top changes the length. In addition to a hold segment, we can also change the type to a step. I've connected an LFO to gate input 1, so we got 6 stages, and I'll send the output to the fold per octave input on a VCO. If we click the type button until the LED is lit yellow, we get a step segment. Now we can change the voltage from 0 volts to plus 8 volts, so we can come up with our own custom sequence. And on top we can adjust the glide time. Now let's patch in a second VCO and connect this to the CV inputs. So now we can create some weird modulation effects. If 
you want to quickly reduce the amount of steps, you can hold down the step button for a second until it starts to blink. And this sets a first loop point. Then we just need to do the same for another step. And this closes the loop. So now we turned our six stage sequencer into a four stage sequencer. And what if I want to create an envelope for the filter cutoff as well? Well, it's just as easy as grabbing an additional gate output and sending it to gate input number five. If I change the type back to ramp or green and connect the output to the filter cutoff CV input, we now got a attack and decay envelope. And we can turn off loop, of course. Now you might wonder what happens if you connect a gate signal to all gate inputs. This creates six individual stages, which effectively turns it into six separate LFOs. If you change the type to ramp, now we just got a single decay envelope. But if you activate hold mode, Now it turns into a LFO. And if we take a look at the manual, we got seven different waveforms to choose from. And the cool thing is that because we are sending a gate signal into it, the LFO is clocked. So with the slider set to 50%, we got one over one, or the original tempo. But we can multiply it towards the top, or half it towards the bottom. But if you disconnect the gate input, the LFO will run freely. On the original hardware unit, you need to use a dummy cable or leave the other end of the cable unpatched for this to work. But here we can just enable looping mode for all six segments. And now if you disconnect all the gate inputs, we got six different unsynced LFOs. Since we've got six stages, we can create more advanced envelopes, like the dual decay curve from the DX7 synth. I'm just sending a gate to input 1 and 6, so we've got five stages over here. So now we've got an attack, a first decay, second decay, sustain, and release. If we go back to our single segment by connecting a gate input to input 1 and 2, we can turn segment 1 into a sample and hold generator. We need to switch to step mode, so the yellow LED, and activate loop. Now if we patch in an LFO, like I did here, with an attenuverter in between, we can generate some melodies. And the slider now works like an offset control. And of course, if we want to, we can add a quantizer in between. Or instead of an LFO, we can use a noise source to make it more random. And if we expand the number of segments to 3 by moving over the gate input, we can turn this module into a sequential switch. So I've set loop points for stage 1 and 3, and all modes are set to step mode. I'm sending 3 outputs from an oscillator, a sine, sol wave and a square wave, into a attenuverter with different values. 
and all outputs are going into the CV inputs. But it may get more interesting if we use another source sound, so maybe a noise signal. Or maybe if we connect it directly. Or change the shape or the glide time. And of course, you can use as many stages as you want. All right, that's it again for this video. I can go on for hours with all kinds of different examples, but check out DivKit's channel for an extensive review of this module. I just wanted to make a quick overview video to get you started. Let me know if you have any questions, and I'll be back with a new tutorial next week. Music